Hi everyone, my name is Holly Webb and I'm going to be reading you an extract from my new book, The Story of Green River, which has just been published in paperback. So in this extract, Serge, the otter, and his friends are worrying about the flood that's starting to rise up around their halt. Sedge nibbled his claws and gazed out across the water, hardly hearing his two friends practising snatches of the ceremonial chant, beating their paws on the muddy bank for time. Ugh! Lily slumped over onto her back, staring up at the dark grey sky. I give up, even the weather's making me sad. That's the point! Tormentil snorted and pushed her, and then the two of them rolled over together in a mock-fierce scuffle, snapping and hissing until they collapsed back on the grass, worn out. Then they leant over the rising water, dabbling their paws, and began to sing again. Not the slow, sad chant this time, but one of the old ones that they loved. Sedge listened to them, humming along as they moved from song to song, and thought about the water seeping slowly up around the halt. A sweet, eerie thread of music jolted him back, and he whipped his head round, staring at Tormentiel and Lily. Where did you hear that? he bit out. The two cubs gazed back at him in surprise. We heard the birds singing it, Tormentiel said. The little warblers in the reeds last night. Lily nodded. We couldn't make out the words. You know how they babble but it's catchy. It was catchy. More to the point, it was intensely, suddenly familiar. Sedge could have sung the words to Lily and Tormentil, or he could have if his voice hadn't been stuck fast in his throat. Ripe black elderberries gleaming in the sun. Ripe black elderberries, enough for everyone. A tide of memories slammed into Sedge, sending him back into his dreams, twisting and turning in the dark floodwaters again. She was there, teeth bared and eyes stretched wide in panic, reaching out her paws to him. Sedge was struggling in the water, trying desperately to catch hold of her. They were so close, but the water kept tearing them apart. His sister, Elderbury. The song that Lily and Tormentil were chuckling over was hers. Elderberry had first made it on this same stretch of bank, kicking her paws in the water with him. They were too young to have tasted fresh elderberries, of course, since they were a late summer fruit, but Bramble had enough of them preserved and pickled in clay jars in the storerooms. Elderberry jam. He could taste it now. His sister had been expert at charming spoonfuls out of the old cook. His sister... Hearing that song again unleashed a torrent of memories that raced through his head as violently as the flood. Sedge sat shaking on the wet grass, bewildered and frightened. She'd been there waiting for him all this time. How could he have forgotten her? Elderberry's paw patting affectionately at his muzzle, chasing her along the bank and in and out the king cups. The first full moon ceremony where they'd stood together draped in garlands, half asleep by the end. The story she told him as they sunned their fur on a dry bank. Their swimming lessons. She'd looked so bright, dashing about in the shallows, whipping up the sparkling water with her tail. The memory was so strong, he felt he could reach out his paw and touch her, twine his tail in hers. She'd been merry, alive. Except, of course, she wasn't. The river had stolen her away, and only said she'd been left coughing and choking on the bank. He'd let her go. This was what he'd been fighting to remember all this time. Sedge twisted his paws together over and over. But how could he have forgotten in the first place? Why had he been allowed to forget her? Had he hit his head when he was in the water? Or had it been simply too much for one small otter to hold inside his heart? The rest of the book is about Sedge deciding that his sister is out there somewhere waiting for him and he is going to go and find her. I really hope that you enjoy reading Silken and Sedge's story as much as I've loved writing it. Bye everyone!